Hey everybody, Michael Snyder, Pacific Northwest and California Weather Watch. Today is April 6th. We're only two days away from the eclipse and we're doing our latest forecast here. We have some high resolution models that are now in range and we have National Weather Service offices that are giving their eclipse forecast. And uh, there's a really high chance that there's going to be some pretty thick high level clouds across much of central and southern Texas here. There could even be some low clouds that can really ruin some of the viewing experience. They do a nice job kind of showing you that if it is high clouds and if it's not too thick, you'll still be able to see the sun, obviously, and it could still make for a nice scene. But if you have the low clouds or the th high clouds are really thick, it can really ruin the viewing experience. Now, taking a look at what is coming here, we have the storm system. Deep Gulf moisture is going to be in place. So that is the problem. And then there's another issue with the severe storms that are going to be coming on as we go through the afternoon and evening hours. Large hail, wind, even a tornado threat, heavy rain and flooding. So everybody trying to get back home, the hundreds of thousands of people out on the road trying to get get back could be subject to the severe weather threat. Now, taking a look at San Antonio, what I want you to pay attention to on the sounding is the red and the green line. You're looking way up in the atmosphere. It's about 39,000 feet, and this is the surface. So you can see we are saturated in the upper levels of the atmosphere. So some pretty thick high-level clouds, and then the potential for some thick lower-level clouds also as well. It doesn't show complete saturation there at the time of the eclipse for San Antonio, but you have to still kind of watch that on the day of the eclipse. If you look at Dallas-Fort Worth, you see a little bit of high cloud activity there as well. And there's the threat of some low clouds, but a little bit better the further north and east you go. Now, if you look across Indianapolis International Airport, check it out. Lower levels of the atmosphere quite dry, as you can see. But there could be some high clouds, but that won't fully ruin the total solar eclipse viewing experience. Because, again, you can kind of see that, or maybe they could be passing through and just be kind of high and wispy. Now, take a look at Caribou, Maine. This actually might be the winner here. Look at the lower levels, nice and dry. It tries to get a little bit saturated aloft, but the weather models are saying that there's going to be some very clear conditions. If you can change your plans last minute and go to Maine, you're probably going to get quite the show. Now, looking at the eclipse sky cover forecast here for Little Rock, Arkansas, if you look across northeast Arkansas, some pretty good viewing there. So that might be the place to go if you can get there from Dallas and some of these surrounding areas. Down across southern central Texas, not looking too hot right now, as you can see. And they even talk about it here. They show the cold front position, the drier air, less cloud cover behind the frontal system there. Now, uh, just a reminder, this is the, the path of totality. Starts just off the coastline of Mexico, moves across Mexico and much of North America for quite a dynamic scene. I just can't believe that Mother Nature is going to throw such a monkey wrench into this here. It's making for a, quite the dramatic um, you know, scenario here across much of Texas because you're getting four and a half minutes of totality. This is the highest area of totality across portions of Mexico and Texas, and it's potentially ruined by a lot of this cloud cover. I'll show you some weather models on that here in a moment. But now you're looking at Texas. And just a reminder here on timeanddate.com, you can click on this map here, and this will enlarge, and it'll show you your exact location. You can click on it, and it'll show you exactly what you're going to expect with the eclipse and what time of these, uh, the moon is going to block out the sun in your location. For example, you can even pick Seattle if you want, and you can see how the sun is going to move across and so uh, let me go up here and I'll go to Seattle, for example, and we'll click on that. And then you can click on Seattle and you can kind of just watch this move across. And you can see that it is going to be a partial eclipse for places like Seattle and other places across the USA, too. So remember your solar glasses when you try to look at it. However, now here is the day three severe weather threat outlook. You know, I've been talking about this the last few days. Not much has changed. Deep Gulf moisture will be in place. And there is even the chance for some significant severe weather here. So you're talking about big hail, you know, really strong winds here. And there is even probably a low tornado threat for some of this activity on in through the late afternoon and evening hours. And this is the lightning uh, uh, density potential here as you go on in through the day as well. So that's about the time the eclipse is occurring. And you can th see things starting to destabilize. But by the time you get to the afternoon hours, there's definitely going to be some thunderstorm activity around, some of them severe. Now, here we go with the upper levels of the atmosphere, about 39,000 feet. Subtropical jet stream is going to be in place. There's no really getting around it by now. We can't really expect the forecast to change. That trough is going to be digging out across the southwest USA. And these clouds are going to be in place across much of Mexico and Texas. 
The, the hope is that maybe you get lucky and you kind of catch a break as the eclipse is happening. But if you look across Maine, I mean, look at the European for several days now, it's been showing nice, clear skies. And some portions of New Hampshire and Vermont and New York might be getting some nice viewing out of this as well. Again, you really want to avoid the low clouds. Sometimes you can deal with the high clouds and you can kind of still see the sun, the globe of the sun uh, through the high clouds as they're passing over. But if you look across South Central, you can see the total cloud cover across some of Texas here. A lot of it's high, but this could still be quite a thick layer of high clouds. And some of these low clouds, if I go back three hours, you can see they're pretty persistent. And the low clouds will just absolutely ruin the solar eclipse viewing here. So if these don't burn off as forecast, and even at the time of the eclipse, they're still forecast to be around, that's going to be a really big problem. And there's even some mid-level clouds showing up as well. So here's the Ohio Valley. Again, kind of a mixed bag here, hit and miss. Some areas showing better than others. I hope these low clouds don't ruin things for places like Cleveland here. But you can see Indianapolis might be quite nice as well. Maybe just some high clouds moving Moving over the top, not many mid-level clouds in the path of totality showing up there until you get towards the Great Lakes. But if you look at the North American model, this is the high resolution stuff that's just now coming into range. And you can see at the time of the eclipse, Arkansas looks like kind of a winner here. Portions of Illinois up into Indiana, Texas, some pretty good cloud cover will be in place. And this is looking across the Ohio Valley. Cleveland here, uh, these clouds are going to be moving, but is it going to time right on when the eclipse is going to be occurring, uh, it could be. But I mean, again, right now, Indianapolis looks pretty good. And persons across, uh, you know, Illinois here, maybe off to the south and east of St. Louis as well. Kind of a, a miss, mixed bag here, but at least it's not just a washout with a big storm across these areas. And Arkansas looking pretty good right now as well. And then, of course, you've got Maine during the t about the time the eclipse is occurring here. Some portions of Montreal off to the southeast across Canada here. You probably have some really good viewing coming up. The only issue is here that it's going to be about a minute shorter of a, tot of a total solar eclipse across portions of Maine. Three minutes, 24 seconds. That's still nothing to sneeze at. That beats the last eclipse we had in 2017. I was just hoping that maybe you could get down into Texas and see it and get that four and a half minutes of totality. But still, nothing to sneeze at will be just an incredibly dynamic show. And you can see we are now one day, 23 hours and 40 minutes away from the total solar eclipse. So yeah, nice to see the National Weather Service offices starting to get in here and put out their eclipse forecast so you can check their uh, try to fine tune. And the problem is trying to fine tune your location on the day of the eclipse. It's going to be so packed that you may want to get to a place, but you simply can't get there because there's, uh, you know, tens of thousands of other people at that area. It gets downright crazy for these solar eclipses. So be prepared for that. And you almost have to set up early and just kind of cross your fingers if you're in one of these areas that is dealing with this cloud cover. But anyway, hope you guys are liking these videos. I'll probably do one more of these tomorrow that I'm going to be live streaming as I'm down out across the region down there. I still have not decided where I'm going to set up, but I'll be live streaming. You guys can follow along for those who can't get out there and view the eclipse. So anyway, hope you guys are having a good day. Click like and subscribe. We'll do this again tomorrow and I'll talk to you guys then.